It's that time again. It's Midweek News, episode 96, for the week of October 9th, 2024. Let's get into it. Arch Linux and Valve enter collaboration. As many of you know, SteamOS is based on Arch Linux. Going forward, Valve will be providing Arch Linux with two important services, a build service infrastructure and a secure signing enclave. It will be interesting to see what this means for Linux gaming, and only time will tell. This seems like pretty exciting news. Let's hope we start seeing results in a few months. Linux Mint 22.1 scheduled for December release. It will come with the Cinnamon 6.4 desktop and an updated theme, expected to be out on or around Christmas. The Mint 22 series is supported until 2029. Gparted Live 1.6.0 is now available. Gparted has just recently passed its 20th anniversary. The new version is based on Debian SID and features the 6.10 kernel, many updates to packages in the system. This version still relies on X11 and users experiencing graphical problems are encouraged to try the safe graphic option at boot. PowerShell environment variables. The people over at IT Pro Today have written an article about PowerShell environment variables. For those of us coming from a Unix-like platform, BSD, Linux, or Mac OS, this is a handy reference and article to refer to. Switching to Linux saves the money. If you're still on Windows 10 and your PC doesn't meet the requirements to upgrade to Windows 11, you may find yourself needing to buy a new machine. Keep in mind, Linux is free and so are the upgrades on Linux. And it doesn't require drastically different hardware. Most software on Linux is available without a subscription. Even if Linux doesn't end up being your daily driver, there is something available on the Linux platform that might just keep your older PC or even Intel Mac running for years to come. Microsoft Power Toys 0.85 is now available. This release features updates and a new utility called New Plus, which allows you to set up a personalized set of templates for quickly creating files and folders from the File Explorer context menu. This might just be interesting to test out. Microsoft Office 2024 is now available for Mac OS and Windows. For those of you who want to use Microsoft Office but don't want to pay the extortion for Microsoft 365, this is the solution for you. Office 2024 Home comes in at $149.99, includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Office 2024 replaces the previous standalone Office 2021. Office LTSC is also available for business and governments wanting a volume licensed solution without a subscription. Secure SSH on Linux. Other than a couple of small annoyances with their video, overall this provides a solid path for users new to securing SSH on Linux. Keep in mind that with the scanning tools available today, changing your default port for SSH isn't going to add security to your system. OpenWRT1 Wi-Fi router is now available. If you want to brave ordering from AliExpress, you can now get a completely open source router running OpenWRT. OpenWRT1 is the product of a collaboration between Banana Pie and the OpenWRT project. This is a Wi-Fi 6 router and features a number of features you won't find on the typical consumer level routers, including expandability through a microbus connector. macOS Sequoia 15.0.1 is now available with bug fixes. This new release claims to have fixed the issues with the initial 15.0 version, which surfaced with various security software. I'm likely going to wait at least one more point release before I upgrade my Mac Mini. Your mileage may vary. The Pi Moroni Pico Plus 2W. Pi Moroni has released a twist on the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. The Plus version adds a Wi-Fi module while using the same RP2350 chip. This is definitely worth a look if you're wanting to develop for the new RP2350 chip, but would like to have Wi-Fi available as an option. It may just be the stopgap board to get until there is an official Pico 2 board with Wi-Fi from Raspberry Pi. And last but not least, Slashdot reports that 159 employees have left automatic amid WordPress drama between Matt Mullenweg and WP Engine. Yes, folks, there is drama in the WordPress ecosystem lately. Matt Mullenweg, CEO of Automatic, is unhappy with WP Engine and their use of WordPress.org resources. There have been lawsuits filed on both sides. It will be interesting to see how this plays out over time. Perhaps it's time for Mullenweg to step down as CEO of Automatic. We can only hope with so many websites dependent on WordPress 
that the two companies can reach a settlement. And that, my friends, will bring us to the end of episode 96 of Midweek News. Thank you for watching. Take a look on screen right now and you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Have a great day.